Hello, this is Cycle 2, Week 22 Science. Before we jump into this experiment, I have a public service announcement. March is uh, coming up soon, and so, arguably, the most delicious, important day of the year, Pi Day, March 14th. The stars are completely aligned. This year, uh, Pi Day is on Saturday. So you don't have to forego math lessons. You don't have to forego Latin or uh, reading, all of those essential things. You can make Pi uh, and enjoy it. Uh, many uh, public schools celebrate Dr. Seuss Day in March. Um, it was a close call in our home school. We had a vote whether we were gonna have Pi Day or Dr. Seuss Day, uh, but the principal came in and he cast the deciding vote in uh, favor of Pi Day. It was a very shocking result, but, but uh, democracy rules. The, uh, our favorite kind of pie here is chocolate chest pie, but whatever kind of pie you like, uh, it, it's worth making. Uh, having said that, let me also say spring is in the air. Let's talk about our experiment. Spring is in the air, and it is time for the men to go marching to war. And so we are going to build popsicle stick catapults this week with the students. Your students are going to love it, and I know you will too. Our basic supplies are rubber bands and popsicle sticks. This is definitely one that I suggest that you practice at home, uh, maybe build a model to bring in so the students can see it. Um, my general advice about models is I, I think models are often helpful in classes, but I, I would kind of you know keep it hidden, keep it in a bag or, or uh, you know away out of sight. Let the students start the process uh, without something specific because you want to you know allow them um, as much creativity as possible. You want to get them engaged, let the, let their brain start working. But then if they're struggling, if they're not quite sure, if they have an idea but they don't quite see how to put it into practice, sometimes just looking at a model is very helpful. Um, so some, something to think about. Um, so that said, the, uh, the, the catapults are, are pretty straightforward to build. Um, the, the first step is to start with two popsicle, stick, popsicle sticks and attach them uh, at one end uh, with a rubber band. That's the first part of the catapult. Then you want to take five popsicle sticks and attach them with two rubber bands um, at, at, at either end. Um, in, the, in the foundations guide, that they recommend uh, maybe attaching a little a little basket with some hot glue. I think that's totally cool, and I think that that's worth doing. I, I think use your best judgment, safety first. But uh, I think especially for the older kids with appropriate supervision, they can use a hot glue gun, and, and they can um, hot glue a, a piece uh, of their catapult. So the, the basic idea of the catapult is we're going to open these two up, and we're going to put this piece in like this, right? And put them in like this, and we're and we're thus going to assemble a very simple, uh, fun, uh, fun catapult. I'm going to show you the one that I made. So for the the basket, I have just a, a lid that I have used a little bit of hot glue and attached it here like that to assemble my catapult. Another little trick that that I suggest is it's a little hard to get the wedge uh, to, to to use the catapult. You have to get this wedge piece to to really sort of hold still. So there's a couple of different ways um, you could do that. You could use a rubber band and you could attach the wedge forward to the, the um, end of the catapult. I think that would work. What, what I found, what works best for me was I took a, a second, another rubber band and I just wrapped it around this bottom stick just where I wanted the catapult to stay. So there's just a, a little friction here, but it's enough to make the catapult work. It works easily. Um, and, and I think that that provides some good flexibility. So that then is the assembled catapult that your students will make. And now, for our weapons of war. Uh, small rocks, little pieces of Nerf ammo uh, might work. Marshmallows would be a good alternative. Uh, and, and pom poms, <laughs> pom poms uh, is an easy way. So of course, pom poms are very soft, easy, uh, a lot of fun. The um, Even the most safety conscious among us can't worry too much about the students shooting their eyes out with a, a pom pom. Um, but I would say we assemble the catapult like this, and now the students can launch it, right? So we hold the catapult um, with one piece, with one hand on the bottom, and then we apply some tension. We apply a little bit of force to our basket, and then we launch <laughs> the pom pom. <laughs> we launch the pom pom. Okay, so uh, that's the basic catapult. That, that's how this works. Now, what kinds of, of things uh, should we talk about with our students? So they'll enjoy building it, um, and then we, we want to remind them. So there's a couple of things going on. The basic idea of a catapult is we're storing tension, right? We're, we're storing the force, uh, we're applying force to store it, uh, to store tension. In our catapult that we're making here, the tension is coming from this piece of wood here on top, right? As this piece of wood is being bent, right? From, from its, its sort of its resting state here, right? As it's being bent, that is what's applying um, the tension, that's what's generating the force on the projectile as it leaves. I think it's worth thinking about the projectile itself. So once it leaves the catapult, 
what forces are acting on the projectile. You have the gravity, the force of gravity, um, pulling on the mass of the projectile, you have air resistance. And then, of course, ultimately, when it strikes the castle wall, you have uh, th that um, as well. But um, as we're safely um, projecting pom-poms in class, we once they leave the catapult, then there's the, the mass and the gravity pulling on the, the weight of the pom-pom. Um, the, the gravity is pulling on the mass of the pom-pom, the, uh, the weight of the pom-pom, as it's moving through the air, and we have the resistance of the air. Um, so I would highlight those forces to the kids, and then I think it's worth asking the question. So which projectiles will go farther? For, especially if you want to bring in, maybe if you want to bring in a pom-pom, if you want to bring in a marshmallow, I think those would be two good ones. Um, you know, let the students experimentally see. You, you could even um, potentially go, go so far as to, as to bring in maybe a small scale. Um, maybe put in maybe three pom-poms and three marshmallows, something like that. So, uh, and then you can talk about, well, well the <clears throat> projectile, because the force is acting on the projectile as it's moving, is the gravity and the air resistance. So the more massive the projectile is, the, the, the higher the weight of the object. Um, and, and so that changes then the trajectory and the path and the students, you can kind of help them um, see it. Another good question might ask is for a single projectile of, of a given mass, how far can it go? And how could we vary how far it goes? Help your students see again that, that the, the catapult works by adding the tension and then releasing it. So if we increase the tension, the projectile should go farther. Well, how are we gonna do that? There's a couple of different ways um, that, that I think we could do it. Let me go back to this one for just a, just a moment. <clears throat> so uh, the tension is effectively, as we said, it's the tension of the stored piece of wood. So if I change the position of the wedge relative to the end of the catapult where the, the two um, pieces of wood are attached, if I go here, is there more or less tension than here? There's a lot less tension, right? The students should be able to see that. So we could think about it then in this way. What if we, what if we measure the distance the projectiles go and we track it for how far from the end of the catapult our wedge piece is for example right so if we imagine shooting a projectile with a distance like that what if we adjust where the projectile or where the wedge sits to here and now we try again can we see a difference if we go here can we see a difference what if we, how close can we get it right how close can we get that wedge Right? So you could vary that distance and then measure the corresponding change in how far the projectile goes. That's especially an activity that I think the bigger kids would be able to do and would enjoy doing. The littler students may have a hard time just constructing the catapults. So again, you know, you know your students, you use your best judgment. Maybe it makes sense for you to have the, the five pieces pre-assembled before class starts so that they can work on this and then the, they can work on, you know, putting it together and holding it in place. The bigger kids, I would just give them the, the, the popsicle sticks and the, um, and the rubber bands. Uh, and then again, if you want a chance to attach um, a, a basket. Uh, so another option might be, if we're, if we're asking the same question, how can we change how far the projectile goes? Um, it works on the same principle, right? If we're going to increase the tension, but what if we, instead of changing where the wedge sits, what if we change the size of the wedge, right? So these are five popsicle sticks. This is 10. What if we make the wedge much bigger? Then I think your students can begin to see and understand if we put the wedge at the same relative position to the end of the catapult with 10 sticks, there's going to be more tension on that piece of wood as we bend it, right? What if we went totally crazy and we used 15 uh, uh, popsicle sticks? So you could change the size of the wedge. You could change where the wedge is located in, in position to the, um, to the end of the catapult. All of those things will change uh, the amount of tension that you're putting onto the catapult and correspondingly how far the projectile will go. Um, this really is a, a fun experiment. It's very much hands-on um, and, and it's a good, a good chance for students to, to do um, an experiment and, and have some fun um, in class. And again, science is all about um, understanding how God's world works, right? And so the more we can encourage our students that they can do this and they can see and they can understand and they can intelligently, they can use the mind that God has given them to understand that it's the tension on this stick that matters. Well, how can I change that? I can slide this wedge back and forth. I can increase the, 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 the size of the wedge itself. All of those things are great. Uh, and those are good ways um, for, to, to encourage the students uh, and for them to learn and to have fun uh, while they're doing it. This is a great experiment. This is Cycle 2, Week 22 Science.